Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. Well, today's video, how to stop sore fingertips. Uh, I've got seven tips to help with this um, and you shouldn't have any more sore finger issues. So whether you're a beginner player or intermediate or advanced, uh, a lot of people, even advanced players, get finger fatigue. Um, they get a lot of callus on their fingers. A lot of guitar players do no matter what level they're at and still getting hurting fingertips. And there's a lot of things that are causing this to happen. Uh, it could be anything from a poorly set up guitar to maybe it is set up right and maybe you just squeeze the neck too hard. Anyways, so I have a total of seven tips written out here and we're going to start at the very top and work our way down. Number one, proper setup of your guitar. A guitar that is not properly set up is going to cause you nothing but grief. Number two, string gauge. Make sure that your string gauge is appropriate, not only for the guitar to be able to function properly without causing damage, but also that it's gonna work with your playing. Um, light touch, very important to have a light touch. Light equals speed equals less callus buildup equals definitely a lot less pain, along with the other first two. Proper hand curvature when doing your chords, very, very important. Um, proper fingering for the chords. It may be comfy, but it's probably not right. Okay. Uh, short nails, keeping your fingernails trimmed. If your fingernails are too long, then that's going to cause you a lot of grief with trying to even do basic chording. And last but not least, the capo. Uh, the capo is used primarily for doing key changes as well as being able to get your vocals onto a key, uh, also for those who are chord limited in their skills, uh, due to either, you know, their fingers are too big, uh, but they can do a lot of basic chords, but they can't do other advanced chords, so they require capo. Capo is also a very useful tool, which I've discovered uh, by teaching myself right-handed guitar. Um, I found that I was struggling a lot um, with a lot of pain. My, my wrist is doing things it never did before. This is stuff that I never had a problem with as a left-handed player because I've been a left-handed player uh, for over 45 years. So, uh, with going the opposite way, I had to find a way around the pain, also in the fingertips, never mind just doing things. So, I discovered a capo trick, which I'm going to show you guys as well. So, a proper set-up guitar, that means uh, properly set up as in... Uh, your intonation is set correctly on your guitar, whether it's an acoustic or an electric. Now acoustics, generally, you don't ever have to mess with the intonation. Uh, it's a very rare, 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 rare occasion that that ever has to be a consideration uh, to be looked into uh, because generally acoustic guitars come as closely intonated as they're ever going to get from the factory. Although we do get duds, of course, coming out of the factory and those require work. Uh, but generally, no. Uh, electrics always have to be intonated properly. The factories do a specific type of an intonation setup based on their own configurations, which tend to be incorrect at best. Um, that's being nice about it. Anyways, um, now part of intonation is also the radius, having the radius set properly for the neck. So whatever your neck radius happens to be, your strings have to follow that, which means this area down here must follow the radius flow of the neck, whether it's an electric or an acoustic. Um, you can look up about radius and setting up the radius uh, on many YouTube videos. I have some videos that talk about it. Um, now, you got intonation, you've got radius, um, you've got the string gauge, has to be suitable to your plane. Now, in general, guitars come properly with the right strings, not just for the guitar, but for the player. Although some people generally prefer a much thicker gauge string. Some actually prefer a thinner gauge. And there's nothing wrong with going thinner because that absolutely will not cause any problems with the guitar, other than that you're gonna have to do a completely whole new setup to accommodate those lighter strings um, because it's gonna be less pull on the headstock to the bridge on the neck and uh, intonation gets thrown out on electric guitars never seen the intonation ever get thrown out on an acoustic by just going to a lighter gauge and i generally have only run um usually 1152s uh have been my lightest gauge on acoustic 
uh, 942s on the electric is my lightest. Um, anyways, um, your majority of your acoustics will come with either 1254 or 1253 uh, from the factory for acoustics, no matter if it's a child sized guitar or adult sized guitar. Electric guitars generally come with either 942, 946, or 1046 is the most common sizes. Now, uh, light touch. Now, light touch is extremely important. Um, if you have the death grip, you're going to be playing out of pitch. No matter how well your guitar is set up, no matter if you've got the stock factory string gauge on, or you're working with a thicker gauge or a thinner gauge, if your grip is too tight, you are going to cause damage to your guitar, i.e. your frets are going to be the first thing to take hit. Uh, other than the fact that you can prematurely wear out your strings because you're putting too much excessive bend uh, into the string when you're fretting the note on the fret. The actual fret is the wire, it's not the in-between. Okay, so if they say third fret, you've got to fret the third fret, you're in between the second and the third fret bar. That's the actual fretted note here, but the actual note is technically being fretted on the third fret itself. So, because when you push down, the string touches the third fret, lifts up onto the fourth so that your string still rings out. And that's how that works. So, that should hopefully save some confusion. Light touch. Start out with just a muted string, just barely touching the string. Start pushing down as you're picking the note. As soon as it rings out nice and crystal clear, you definitely have got the proper amount of tension required on the string. If you go deeper, this is what happens. You can hear the pitch raising and lowering as I'm doing this. With a death grip, it doesn't matter how well things are done, you are definitely playing out of pitch or tune. You are also knocking your guitar slowly out of tune as you are doing the death grip. Not to mention you will cause excessive pain in your fingertips. This can lead to other hand issues down the road um, and almost always does. Uh, I hear the stories myself all the time on Facebook. Um, that's why I tell people, lighten your touch up, learn to play lighter. Lighter also equals speed. Also know from playing lead licks if you're a lead player watching this video you guys generally are hitting very light and very fast so you guys already know a little bit about that so when it comes to the whole strumming thing it tends to throw off lead players a lot but even the majority of rhythm players they put too much tension on they're playing out of tune all the time it may not sound like it to you and to your ears but if you if you really listen You can hear the difference. You'll also find that the more aggressively you squeeze the neck for your chords, the more aggressive you tend to strum. It makes it very hard for you to actually strum lightly when you have a very aggressive hold on the strings. Okay? Proper hand curvature. Hand curvature is very important. Watch my fingers, watch the angles they go on, watch my arm as I play different chords. It's not just about the angle of the arm going in and out at the back side. It's not just about the angle here. It's also about how much goes this way or this way. If you're too much this way, you create a lot of dead notes. If you're too much this way, yes, you've got lively notes, but then you also got a really sore friggin' wrist, which is also gonna lead to finger cramping, and it's gonna actually cause you to press slightly harder on the strings, which you shouldn't be doing. You need to work out that curvature. It's a feel thing. I can't give you an actual precise angle or anything to go by other than you know on the whole there's angles involved here you're more straighter with a G with a D you're more straighter this way but still off the side a bit so you're going on angle this way F again there's an angle of attack there are different attack angles for every single chord even for bar chords 
do not play with your arm on your leg. Okay, a lot of people do this. They think, oh, it's comfy this way. It might be comfy, but it's gonna screw you up. It's gonna slow you down. It's gonna make you a very choppy quarter. You won't be able to chord properly, and it will affect your strumming too. Okay, proper fingering for the chords. Now, this is kind of a one that's been up for debate for a while. It's been argued back and forth, which is right, which is wrong. In my opinion, this is why I say this is right. The G chord. The G chord should be played with only fingers two, three, and four. Okay, so your fingers are one, two, three, and four. Your thumb is not counted, but it is used to hold an above F sharp, or it could be a G, or it could be an A, whatever thumb you're going to add for whichever chord is going to be the corresponding add. Okay, so with the G, playing it with two, three, and four allows you to do this. So you can go between a G and a G7, a G suspended, very quick and easy, boom, 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 okay? It also helps you play faster, right? Doing the right fingering. If you do it with one, two, three, this causes problem. How are you going to get to a G7 instantaneously? It's going to be harder, right? Now, it can be done. It takes a lot longer to learn how to do that. Could take you months, could take you years to get really good at doing that as opposed to taking just a couple of days or a couple of weeks to just go. I think I like the shorter version. I like to do things quicker so I can move on. Um, and that's just one example of a chord. Okay, There's other chords that have been done incorrectly um, because they were one way at one time, now they're another way. And I don't know why sometimes they change stuff. It's kind of actually ridiculous. I asked one guy once, why do you use one, two, three? He says, so I can noodle around with my pinky. I said, what the heck are you going to noodle with? There's nothing for that pinky to hit for a string that you can noodle with that's going to make any kind of musical sense, period. And after that, he kept quiet. So, anyway. Uh, short nails. If your nails are really short, what's going to happen is, or sorry, if they're really long, what happens is your nail drives into the string above, causes buzzing. You think it's your guitar? No, it's you, it's your nails. The other thing is, is it makes it very hard to fret notes if you have long nails, because it's gonna be the nail's gonna be hitting the fretboard before anything else. And your finger, if you're, if you're playing properly and playing lightly on the strings, your strings never ever physically touch the fretboard. Strings won't, neither will your fingers, okay? So this is why I can't understand. I've seen a few guitars come in for repair over the years, and only a couple though, where the guitar is so well used, the, the fretboard everywhere is, is literally dinged. I mean, the only way to fix it, it would be to, to either change the entire fretboard or rip off all the frets and just um, lay down um, filler of some sort, like a, like a wood filler or even better yet, a resin filler and re-level, re-sand, flatten everything out, and refret the sucker, and that avoids actually changing the fretboard out, which is very scary to do, because if you do anything wrong removing a fretboard, you wreck the entire neck. So on an older guitar, I'd probably choose to go with a filler of some sort, either resin or wood filler to fix that. Um, but that's from people that are playing way too grippy on the neck. The other thing is, is when you have a death grip, you destroy your frets years and years before they would ever have to be done okay you should get 10 15 20 years out of a set of frets before they even need to be dressed let alone replaced okay and that's even on cheap frets anyhow last but not least the capo now the capo is a very useful tool if you need to play in the key of a flat you put the capo on the first fret and you do a g formation chord which is actually a flat. Your fretboard is dual, okay? So G sharp is a flat. 
Now, if you need to play in the key, if you need to play in C sharp, okay, then you do the C first. So now that's a C sharp. Okay, and it has its corresponding flat, which is key of C, right? So anyways, and the list goes on. If you need to go to A, Now, if you need to play something in the key of D, capo, second fret, C chord, D. Okay? Or you just take the capo off and just play the D. And other corresponding chords that would be like the rest of the chords you need for the song in the key of D. Now, the idea behind the capo, which is going to help you with hand curvature, which is what I would suggest using the capo for initially. Um, this is something I came up with when teaching myself right-handed guitar. I was going through a lot of pain, a lot of struggle, a lot of pain in the fingertips. I couldn't play for more than a couple minutes. Everything was hurting. I was even getting excruciating pain, burning pain up my forearm, everything. It was just horrifying. It's like, there's got to be a way around this. And because uh, curvature was also a big deal too, playing right-handed. I played left-handed my whole life. Okay? So, put the capo on the fifth fret. Even on an acoustic guitar or electric, it will bring the strings even closer, which also will help you to play lighter. But it's going to force the natural curvature out, okay, so that it's not too extreme. Now it does move this in from being able to move around too much in the, the elbow area. It's hard to just do a B7 up that close. But once you get comfortable with the fifth, move it down to the fourth. And then so on and so on until so you can play without any difficulties and still keep a light touch and not be hurting. I can sit here and play my acoustic guitar, which has a much higher action on it than my electrics do. Okay, but I can still sit here and play my acoustic guitar for hours on end and not feel any pain or discomfort or any problem at all. And if you look at my fingertips, I have hardly any callus whatsoever that you could even see or even touch. Okay, in fact, it feels very minimal amount and yet I can play for hours on end. And yes, my fingers are stained because I'm a smoker. But anyways, so with having barely any callus there, I still have a lot of feeling left. Now, it kind of sucks we're trying to use a smartphone with this hand because it's the hand I tend to use a lot, okay, even with my phone. But I can always put my phone in this hand and use my left hand. Uh, of course, that I gotta wait till the callus is gone because of playing right-handed guitar, callus both fingers, right? Um, <coughs> but even with the with playing right-handed, I can now play for hours on end if I want to and not feel any pain or discomfort, no cramping, nothing, right? Because the guitar is set up really well. Now, the thing is too, I like a very low action on my guitars, okay? Um, and I like to use the factory strings generally, except the exception is my studio. Uh, my Gibson Les Paul Studio came with 946s. I put 1046s on it because it was very difficult setting the guitar up with the 9s. It didn't really want to set up very well. So why Gibson put 9s on it, I'll never know. Um, but after switching over to the 10s, that little extra bit of pressure on the neck to pull up at it worked great. Setting up the guitar, dialing in my intonation, everything went fine. It's all rock and roll. Okay, so that was a really big, huge bonus there. Um, so that's the, the one guitar that was the exception. Otherwise, I run 946 on my Tele because that's what it came with. My other two Les Pauls both came factory 1046s on them. This is 1253. I have a kicker, um, what I call the uh, fireplace guitar or camp guitar for an acoustic. Uh, it's just a little three quarter size cheap $120 guitar. I put 11s on it. Uh, because I wanted the lighter strings on it and it also set up better. Um, it was a cheap guitar and with the 1254s that were on it from the factory, that was too much tension on the neck and the, the body on that guitar. 
and it did have some issues hey cheap guitar but why go through a whole massive reset up on the thing if all I need to do is change a set of strings and on that guitar the 1152s straightened her right out everything's perfect on it no problems no buzzing nothing and the actions actually reasonably good on it so I'm not having a problem with that part on it it's okay uh, sometimes you got to go to a lighter string but guys will go to heavier strings because they like they say more volume it's not more volume really that'd be like a higher action creates more volume actually it does create a little bit more volume I'll agree with that but then it creates a whole new pile of problems even if you're trying to be a light touch you can't with a high action okay because you've got so much more distance to cover to push down this the amount of strain you add to a guitar if you have your action set up really low the amount of foot pounds of pressure between here and here is far less with a low action than with a high action with a higher action it's a lot more strain even with the same string gauge so it's gonna actually it can actually over time and will guaranteed cause damage over time to your guitar running a higher action okay it's also going to cause damage to you as the player having a higher action because now you're forced to push down even further and I see this on electric guitar players and acoustics along both they both have high action the guy the guy or the girl likes the high action the problem is is you're pushing so much more every time you push more and more distance you add more and more pressure into that pointed area of the guitar you're which means you're also stretching the string as you're pushing down that much more as opposed to a low action setup you're barely putting any extra pressure on the string right so this way you're going to be putting more pressure on with a higher action and you're going to have to fret that note a lot harder just to get it to where you would barely have to touch it with a low action and in this case you're now causing premature fret wear you're damaging your fingers because you're creating big trunks in your fingers you're also creating big calluses on your fingers which can get very unmanageable um, and also look very disgustingly gross too so you know my fingers still look like I'm not even a guitar player yet I've been playing my entire life now um, with that being said I didn't always have a light touch I didn't always have the best setup guitars in the beginning it wasn't until a few years in actually several years in before I was actually taught how to set up guitars and I was also taught about the benefits uh, of the low action and you know to me I think the benefit too is even in string bending you can bend a string a lot easier with a low action than you can a high which is statistically proven to be true however people think that with a higher action they think that they're bending the strings a lot better uh, as far as music goes because they're not going to run into the other string problem is they don't spend the time practicing with the low action to know the difference they just put a high action on their guitar they think it's better and that's what they go with so they don't take the actual time to learn the guitar if on how the guitar should actually be realistically okay I mean when a company sets up a guitar Godan for example they they I had the Godan session that action on that guitar from the factory was so deathly illy low I was surprised it didn't buzz of course I've also been able to accomplish that on my court white acoustic that I had I got the action that low on an acoustic and it was very very nice and no buzzing anywhere so you know but I can bend strings without running into their strings and do you know all this other stuff without running into their strings with a low action with a high action it's too cluggy for me I find that it's very uh, difficult too with a high action to actually bend that note up I can bend two steps up on my Les Paul and not knock it out of tune right now of course it helps having a string butler on there to do that but uh, there's no way you're gonna bend two steps up on acoustic not with 12 gauge strings and if you have heavier gauge strings and you have a high action oh forget it you're you're kind of euchred but anyways guys this is uh what i got for you guys today so let me know what you think try these ideas out don't knock it till you try it i always say i mean i've tried things that i thought nope 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 and a lot of times it still ended up being a nope 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 and a few times it ended up being hey that actually does work really well so 
anyway, um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. Um, if there's something guitar related you guys want to see, let me know. And if I am, if I am able to do it, you guys know I will. If I can't, well, then I can't. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.